Okay, in this video I'm going to, part two of two-dimensional projectile motion, we're going to go through and try and answer these questions now. Time of flight, maximum high of the ball, and range of the ball. Um, you remember in the last video in part one, we took our original velocity, our initial velocity, which was 12 meters per second at 35 degrees, and we broke that down into its two component vectors, or its two component velocities, using uh, our trig functions, and we found that the initial velocity in the y direction was 6.88 meters per second, and the initial velocity in the x direction was 9.83 meters per second. And um, now we're going to do, as I said, try and figure out the time, the maximum height, and the range of the ball. All right. So I think we'll go back and let's see if we can go back here to our kinematic equation. These are the kinematic equations that we used earlier. And um, the first one that we're going to figure out, the first thing we're going to figure out is the time. So let's roll this up a little bit and we want to find the time. It's the time of flight, the time that the ball is in the air. And let's figure out what we know. We know that the initial velocity, now I'm going to try not to use too many symbols here, but vi in the y direction. We know that that's 6.88 meters per second. We know that VF, and the ball is going to go up and slow down. So this is zero meters per second. And we know that our acceleration is minus 10 meters per second squared. Okay? Now it doesn't state these last two things in the problem, but you should start to understand those things intuitively. So we know VI, VF is zero, and we know our acceleration, and we want to know the time. So let's go back here and look at our equations and we see here that we know that this is zero VF we know this we know the acceleration and we know our time the other two equations we need the height that the ball goes and we don't know the height yet so we can't really use those so let's go back and um, use the other equation the first equation all right uh, roll this up just a little bit more and we get that VF equals vi plus at. And let's just solve the equation. We want to know the time. Here's our t over here. So we know that the final velocity is zero. We want, we want to move this to the other side. So we know that negative vi equals at, which means that t, our time, is negative vi over a. All right, so let's plug our numbers in. Our initial velocity was 6.88 meters per second. Now this is negative because we subtracted vi, and then we're going to divide that by the acceleration. We know it has to come out to a positive number, and it does because our acceleration is minus 10 meters, oops, meters per second squared. And if we divide those things out, we have seconds here, second squared here, these meters cancel, this cancels with one of these. This is an S for acceleration second squared, and we're, at, we're left with 0 0.688 seconds. Now, that's for the ball to go up and to stop, because we used our initial velocity as 6.88 and our final velocity 0. So to get the full time, you got to multiply this by 2, because this is just the time for it to go up. And that means that the final time is going to be equal to 1.38 seconds. So that's the full time up and back down. Okay? So that's question number 1. All right, let's do question number 2. Let's see if we'll draw a line here. Question number two. Maybe we should switch colors. Let's do this in like a nice orange. Okay. Question number two is the height. So we want to know what's the height. And that's going to be the height in the y direction. So maybe we can put here h, y, we'll call that the height in the y direction. Now, <clears throat> now we know, once again, we know the initial velocity in the y direction 
is 6.88 meters per second. We know still that the final velocity is zero meters per second. And we know once again that the acceleration is minus 10 meters per second squared. Okay, so let's go back to, oops, daisy. Let's get rid of that. All right, so let's go back to our equations and let's see which equation we're gonna use this time. Now, this time we know the time, we know the final, we know the initial, and we know what half is half. And here's our distance, okay? I wrote down hy, but this is just our distance. This equation we actually can't use because we don't know, uh, let's see. Well, actually, we could use this equation also, so we can use either one. This one turns out to be a little easier, so we'll use this equation right here. And so let's go back to the problem, and we're going to put down that the height, now I'm going to switch out x for hy. So I'm going to put <coughs> hy, the height in the y direction, is one half uh, the initial plus the final times the time. Let me just plug our values in. One half, the initial velocity is 6.88 meters per second, plus zero meters per second, that's our final velocity, and the time. Now the question is, which time are we gonna use? We wanna know the height, we don't wanna know the actual distance that it travels, so that we have two times, really, 0.688, or 1.38, and the 1.38 is the time to go up and down, the 0.68 is the time just to go up, and that's what our height is, so we're just going to multiply that by 0.688 seconds, and we do all that, and we get that the height in the y direction is going to be 2.37 meters, all right, that's our height, and you could use the third equation a little more complicated, but you get the same answer. Okay, so now we know the time, 1.38, we know the height, and let's... Uh... Okay, now that we've gotten the time and the height, we can go on and get the distance that the ball is going to travel. And I just want to scroll back up here and uh, remind everybody that we figured out that the initial velocity in the x direction is 9.83 meters per second, and the only acceleration that's, or the only force that's acting on the ball is uh, gravity in this direction, minus 10 meters per second squared. There's nothing acting on the ball in the x direction. We're going to disregard air resistance and uh, any friction. Therefore, uh, the velocity we have here in the x direction is not going to change. Okay, so that's an important thing to remember. All right, so let's go back here. Here's the range. We're gonna get the range in this case. And for the range, you can just use that, this equation speed is distance divided by time. We wanna know the distance, and that means the distance is the speed times the time. The speed, as we said earlier, is uh, 9.8 three meters per second, and we can use this equation, as I mentioned earlier, because the speed is not changing. And the time, the time we have to make sure we use the right time, in this case we're going to use um, 1.38 seconds, that's the total time, not the 0.68, because that's how long it takes for the ball to go into the air, and therefore we figured out now that the distance that the ball is going to travel is 13.57 meters. So the distance is 13.57 meters. Now we could use our second kinematic equation and you'll get the exactly the same answer. Okay? So there we go. The time in the air, the height, and the distance that the ball travels.